three day trip to the top of the South Island. Um, another epic trip I did the other weekend. Um, well, day one was Christchurch to Blenheim, uh, where Grant's Triumph Triple produced Mountain Dew. And then day two, we travelled from Blenheim all the way to Taikaka, but then stayed the night in Nelson, where we did some twisties over Taikaka Hill. And then later, day three, which was Nelson, back home to Christchurch, where we visited the amazing uh, New Zealand Classic Motorcycles Museum in Blenheim, where there's a couple of rough superiors and a few other rare bikes. So stay tuned to watch that. This is the group that I rode with and done a few little introductions. Yeah, we know, ride a Ducati Monster 916. My son Neil's got a Ducati as well, so just keep an eye on each other. Rain him in a bit. So we're going to have a good ride today. I hope uh, have some fun like we did last time. Uh, Neil riding the Ducati 900. Uh, new tyres on it, so it should be going good. And hopefully, it stays upright in the wind. There, there's Lee, and I'm on the Triumph Bonneville. So, um, it's pretty stoked for the trip today. Polished it enough, so it should slip through the wind. Cool. Hello. G'day, my name's Grant. I've got a 2012 Triumph Street Triple R. Um, best bike I've ever owned. I'm absolutely, really looking forward to this trip, with guys. Cheers. Suresh, this is my bike, the Kawasaki W800. Uh, it's based on the British twin engines, uh, slightly smaller than the Triumph, uh, but it's, it's great fun. Keeps me out of trouble. Hi, I'm Jonathan. Um, you may already know me. Um, I've got the BMW R80 today, so looking forward to this ride. A bit warm, humid, and hot. Probably a chance of a bit of rain, but it should be a bit of fun. As we left, our mate Alistair, who couldn't join us on the ride because he's just about to move town, took some group photos and sort of joined, he, he rides a Bros, I think it's a Bros 650, um, Honda Bros, uh, which sounds a bit Ducati-like, quite a nice bike, so we fared well to him, shame he couldn't join us, but yep. And then we head north through the North Canterbury, where there's lots of roadworks, lots of winds, and then I ran into a bit of a problem. I've got a slipping clutch. Yeah, I was going up some of those hills and it was just revving. Um, or enough to put me off, but um, I think it's just it just needs adjusting. Yeah, because it's the bite is. I think you can adjust it there, right? I don't know which way it goes. Well, yeah, yeah, I was going up the hill and then the revs suddenly go. And I gave it a bit and it was like, oh shit. So but it's just it's just been taken apart. So I don't I don't think the clutch is worn out. I think it's just it because it was taken in it might have not been adjusted properly. Yeah, we managed to fix the bike just adjusting the clutch cable, so all was well. It's amazing because I always feel really nervous before a big ride like this, you know, mechanical failure or intimate death. Um, but everyone was okay in this ride. Um, had a bit of a mishap in Kaikoura, but you'll find out about that in a minute. Here I'm just following Lee over some twisties on his Bonneville. Um, it's probably one of my favourite bikes on the ride, actually. Um, it's uh, one of the last of the carbureted Bonnies, which has been uh, uh, the bigger bore or the cylinders are bigger than a normal. Then we had a bit of a refreshment stop in Wyo. I think that's how you pronounce that. Sort of a very small isolated township off the beaten track but we've visited it quite often because there's some nice twisties on the roads around there, sort of the back roads towards Kaikoura. We're heading into summer here in New Zealand. This is Kaikoura where um, I was riding uh, Grant Street Triple and something went wrong. Yeah. It's a hose. Yeah. It's a hose. Yeah. Easy bike. Um, so what's happened is a coolant leak caused by the chain rubbing on one of the hoses, which is entirely my fault because I fixed the um, 
gear position sensor, put the cover back on, what I didn't realise is um, I should have run the hoses in this slot here and instead they've been on the inside and then the chain as you can see is rubbed on the um, on the hose so that the chain, you can just see the top of it where the hose actually polished the chain as it's gone through. Bugger. So we just got Neil off to get a new hose from Super Cheap yep. and got some Mountain Dew out of the <laughs> process. He's out of This is about Where about are you from? Uh, I'm from Switzerland. My friend is, in, uh, is from Poland. Yeah. And uh, we did three times the world from north to south to south. Oh gosh. Yeah. First was from Alaska to the Bay to Ushuaia. Yep. Then we went to uh, Cape Town. Yeah. From Cape Town up to the North Cup in Norway. Yeah. And then from Norway, from the North Cup down to South Wow, Mountains, wow. New Zealand. And is that your website there? Yeah. That's all the info. Oh, wicked. But I, it's written in German, sorry. Yeah, 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 that's all right. Well, we, I've got a couple of videos I've put up, right? But yeah, it's my old BMW R80. Yeah, yeah good, good, good bike, that. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, same trip. Nice to meet you, though. Yeah. All right, see ya. We were all quite jealous of those two chaps, thought either they've got no kids or, or wives or commitments. Um, all of our dreams would be to do that one day, but obviously just really difficult and also the financial backing. But New Zealand seems to be a country that attracts quite a lot of um, international, you know, sort of world travellers on bikes. Um, often people hire them coming to New Zealand, but those guys obviously from Switzerland and Poland had brought their own bikes over and I had a quick look at the website which you saw the link on the the pannier unfortunately it's all in German but it'll be interesting to read some of their stories probably using Google Translator. Here's Lee and I just hooning it along uh, sort of north of Kaikoura through to Seddon following some trains. Had a pretty big earthquake here a couple of years ago in Seddon. Um, not too much damage, no no lives lost but it was the first time I travelled this far since then. Um, but unfortunately uh, the weather started to change but here you can see the scenery's changed a little bit there's some uh, jaggedy hills here but the hills sort of have nice sort of rolling sort of mounds um, not too sure what geographically causes that but there's a lot of wind here so maybe a bit of erosion and stuff and um, maybe the limestone and also it's, it's, it's great land for growing grapevines so there's a lot of grapevines in this area um, you may have heard of Montana wines I believe they're their grapes are based here in Blenheim. Might be wrong with that, but there's a lot of wine. <laughs> here the rain really settles in. And luckily it wasn't too bad, but enough to be off-putting. So here we are coming into Blenheim itself, which was our first night stay. Came across a few mad drivers that don't indicate. This red truck here didn't indicate, and I was sensing it would do that. But unfortunately, this happens about three or four times when I was in Blenheim. Seems to be people don't know how to use indicators. Um, also here, pulling into this driveway, another guy coming out towards the left. Kind of knew he was going to do that. But this was our stay, just a basic motel hotel. Um, got some food. Um, and then we played a bit of a trick on Grant in the morning, which was fun. We uh, found some washing up liquid. In, under the sink and we thought we would pretend it's some more coolant fluid but you'll see what happens. Grant? Yep. Have you seen this? <laughs> oh, you took I can tell. Oh no, I oh, know I didn't do it. It was a splash. I can tell. Yeah, oh, no. of course, course he's a police officer. Yeah, yeah. Oh, damn. Oh. Recording. Yep, sussed us out straight away. Here we are. We're leaving out of Blenheim towards Nelson. 
um, as you can see more grapevines heading up into the hills um, some few little twisties this was quite early in the morning so quite chilly so had me um, heated grips on full burn which was nice and toasty uh, but also it rained overnight so um, yeah the roads were okay but not too slippery took us around about 40 minutes to reach Nelson this is Nelson which is sort of on the other coast almost sort of the north of the South Island and here's uh, New Zealand's most ugliest building um, I think it's the Nelson City Council building and here we pull out side of Lambretta's which is a bit of a landmark for motorcyclists in New Zealand um, it's a cafe that's been around for many years I've I've often stopped here when I'm doing some trips through um, originally I, I was living in the North Island and and ventured south every now and then and would come to Nelson and have a cup of tea and a sort of nice greasy cooked breakfast as you can see there's lots of motorcycles a lot of these guys had also come from Christchurch but came the other coast which had a lot of rain and we kind of were going to come that way originally but saw the long forecast was a bit drizzly so we thought we would um, try and avoid as much bad weather as possible so it was only really that drizzle coming into um, Blenheim was bad so here's Lambretta's have a look inside too few couple classic scooters obviously no Piaggio and Vespa or Lambretta here it's kind of sad that the new Lambrettas don't have that sort of pizzazz the old ones do um, you know I myself had a uh, Vespa for a couple of years one of the old uh, manual sort of PX 200s and I really loved it and I was hoping that Lambretta would sort of bring back their scooter in that kind of form even if it was with a four stroke but no, it's just the old twist and go. Here's Wilson, my friend, the backpack. Uh, the guys were hassling me a bit because he followed me wherever I was going. And he was riding the back of my bike for the whole journey, uh, apart from the time we went over to Takaka. So this is Mochueco on the way to Takaka. So we, um, we wanted to head over to some best twisty roads in New Zealand. And um, Sharish wanted another coffee, so we stopped uh, to fulfill his coffee need. And then we headed out. Here's some apple crates because this area here back there uh, is, um, is a very much a uh, fruit growing area. So apples and all that. And there's a cycle path back there under that cog. So this is coming into Kaiteri Terry. I think it's Kaiteri. And um, it's, it's a beach that doesn't need to be photoshopped. It's, that's the actual colour of the, the water. And the, well, mainly because of the, the sand, the golden sand sort of um, flicks out of the water that gives it that nice sort of turquoisey colour. Lee and Sharish and myself kind of took a detour, we accidentally took the wrong turn but I'm kind of glad we did take this turn so I got some good posy shots of my bike and noticed this inflatable sort of jungle gym out into the sea which looked quite fun. So we're all hooning it back to the main highway to where the others had turned off. Um, sort of backtracking ourselves about five or ten minutes to get up onto the Takaka Hill, which is this here. An amazing twisty road. Kind of um, remind me, reminds me of the Port Hills back in Christchurch, but times ten. And got these amazing hairpin sort of corners that make great photo opportunities. A bit like the Mulholland um, riders videos that you see online where people go around tight corners and often not making it all the way around so I came back here a bit later and videoed the boys hooning it around this corner sort of got a very sort of alpine feel this area a bit like Switzerland this is Takaka which is about an hour and a bit maybe from Nelson stopped here for a um, bit of a feed and a bit of a back scratch. I had no idea this place existed till this ride. Thought I'd seen most of New Zealand. Here's me and my Lemmings Aid, which is a lemonade by, made by the Muscle Inn, which is a famous eatery in um, this place. Obviously, seafood is a um, sort of major delicacy in New Zealand. This truck here later on 
I passed it and noticed that the guy had to call his brakes down with water on the way down the hill. So David and I hooned up here quickly because we wanted to get some photos of the boys and um, wanted to make a bit of head time so we could get ourselves settled and get some good sort of money shots of the boys going around the corners. And this is the corner. There's two or three corners like this on the, the hill, but this is probably the one with the best view. Here's David checking out the views. And a few other bikes in this road. Seems to be very popular with motorcyclists from Nelson for a quick Sunday ride. Here come the boys with Lee in the front, Neil and Grant, a bit like a salami sandwich, two Brits and an Italian stuck in the middle. And here's Grant having another go. And a few more ride bys. And here's uh, going back down the Takaka Hill, sort of fast forward it because it's about a 40 minute ride, if not more. Um, Neil and um, Lee and I just hooning around the corners. And at the end of the hill, we checked out our tyres, and I think, I think Neil won that one, as you'll see in a second. Yeah. So we all had pretty much new tyres for this trip. Here's Lee with some supplies. And this is the place we stayed in Nelson, which was just a sort of basic campsite. And um, it was really nice weather. And a nice little van in the background too, which I'll check out in a second. Unfortunately, we were right under the Nelson flight path. Great for plane spotters. So then we all got ready to go out to tea and headed to some pirate themed restaurant for a quick feed. But first David had to try out Lee's little triumph and I think he was converted. Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a stretch, but I think I can get used to that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can, you'd probably be called Justin. <laughs> I suppose you would be able to adjust them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you like that? Hey? This is that lovely van. I've seen a few of these over the years and wondered how they can, um, handled. This is um, our pirate-themed um, restaurant we headed to. Had a rum of cocktail, of course, and burgers, which was, I think, our second night of burgers. And that's the end of day two. Day three. We headed to the New Zealand Motorcycle Museum. This was just amazing. And it was the main reason we actually went on this trip. I managed to win a few tickets um, on a Facebook competition where you pose with your bike and try and get as many likes as possible. So thanks to all those viewers who helped out with that. And, um, and I'll show you some decent video in a second. This is just sort of like a sped up version. 
getting a quick snapshot of the whole place. So I'm not sure how many bikes were there, but we were just like gobsmacked. So as you enter, you've got some black shadows, Vincent black shadows, and then some Indians, and, um, and there's about six uh, rough superiors as well, which we'll see in a second. So here it sort of starts with a very early classic bikes and these are the Vincents again. I don't know too much detail about classic bikes but I do have a huge interest so apologies if I get any facts wrong but here's the Bruff Superiors and the second one that you see the BOA 928 apparently that's worth around 200,000 New Zealand dollars and is the rarest of the Bruff Superiors here. Um, I've heard about these bikes, I've seen many documentaries, so I was quite excited to actually see them in the flesh, but I hadn't realised there was more than one, so um, just was amazed, and there were slight differences obviously, different engine sizes, this one here with a sidecar, and all sorts of different modifications with starter motors and on some of them I believe, uh, I may be wrong, there may be some sort of alternator, but yeah amazing bikes so these bikes were made as luxury sports bikes of the day uh, Lawrence Arabia of course he was famous for I believe crashing and dying on his and was very passionate about the bike um, and and the history behind the bike that I heard um, but just it's just the finish was amazing but also in this collection there was bikes from all over the world um, you could see the evolution of motorcycles yeah and how the transportation, especially through post-war or pre-war, especially with scooters and, and other bikes. And we'll come back to those scooters in a minute as well. I think these are matchless there, I'm not too sure. And these bikes had amazing tyre tread. I wasn't too sure if that was original where it, was, it said non-slip in the tread pattern. And I have a funny feeling the original was like that as well. Wow, it's an early trike. The museum was beautifully displayed. The, the finish was, am was amazing. They had sort of Jackson Pollock splatters all over the floor. And, and this wallpaper that kind of resembled concrete or iron cladded walls which at first I thought was real and had to look up close so just just a, a really beautiful collection um, and the, you know the people and the people who own the bikes and, and who put this together it's just it's just amazing for the public to go and enjoy this because there's a lot of private collections that you don't often see and this is obviously a private collector's bike bikes um, but but it's amazing so going back to the early bikes here And then a few BMWs, a matchless, I believe. And then a single BMW at the top in white. Haven't seen one of those before. A few early airheads from the 60s and the 50s. What I found amazing was the different engine types. You know, quite a lot of early bikes were inline fours, but obviously going in a direction where there's a lot of overheating on the engine, and then you've got the square like fours. Bike and then, then here, yep. Oh, no, I meant that one. Neil's favourite bike? <laughs> <laughs> Not. Also. This was his favourite bike, and probably mine you too as well. You think that um, transparent bit and fuel tanks more often? I've seen it in bookshops. Just the way they had all the bikes positioned was great. The different themes, uh, the makes. And here's a uh, BMW uh, 90S, oh, I can't remember now, I know off by heart, but I'm talking so much I forget. <laughs> the and the workshop was like a surgery. It was immaculate, um, where all the bikes are renovated or worked on. And I think also, I'm, I'm not too sure, but I think other people's bikes may be worked on that are quite collector's bikes. Um, but there's plans that, that, that they will hire some bikes out for people to pay to actually ride them. So yeah, that's a BMW 90S, uh, that's what I meant. Which is a 
similar to my bike. A bit more expensive. A little bit more powerful too, I believe. So it's the first 90S that I've seen up close as well, so that was good. And a few more beamers with little indicators on the end of the handlebar, which is kind of unique. And here's the back of an old Briton. They didn't have any many Briton, well, they only had the one Briton here because at the moment they're, um, most of them are over in America doing a few sort of uh, publicity um, runs with John Britton's anniversary. Uh, they were in Christchurch and one of my other films shows all, or most of the Britons uh, riding around Rupuna, which is a raceway where they tested. Here is a collection of scooters. They had a Ducati scooter, a Triumph scooter, um, obviously the um, Lambretta and a, and a Piaggio or Ve uh, Vespa, and a few Douglases, um, which is interesting to see where the bikes use leather instead of metal chains. And that's a Mitsubishi, and on top is the Ducati. And here I've got a bit of a selfie in an old BSA sidecar, which is the only bike you could actually touch. <laughs> I don't blame them. So, of course, it was upstairs. So there's and then there's upstairs. Twice as many bikes. So I had the Triumphs, the Harleys, the sidecars, and a few modern classics up here as well. So that's the Harley bit. And some Nortons, some BSAs. We we just didn't spend enough time in this museum. You could probably have a whole half day and still not see everything. It was good to see that these bikes leak as much oil as mine. <laughs> but I love the amount of chrome that they had on bikes in these days. You know, in the, uh, you know the old bikes. Um, and, the, and the colours that they use. Maybe it's just seeing them all together. Here's a few race bikes just nicely displayed on the wall. When you go into the museum you can download an app and there's all these QR codes that you sort of click your phone on next to each bike and it gives you an in-depth story and the history about each bike. Um, unfortunately I was spending so much time videoing I actually didn't get to do all, any of this so I'd love to go back to the museum and actually spend some good quality time there. A couple of early sidecars and also the poster art was amazing it's something I want to get into my garage Here's a Triton, which is half Norton, half um, Triumph. A couple of lads got excited about that and wanted to take it home. And that's an unusual bike, wasn't too sure what that was. And there's an inline four, as you can see it probably overheated on the back cylinder quite a bit. Um, and they had this really amazing reading room where they had lots of motorcycle books and um, we were all thinking we'd love to spend hours here, if not the night with the fire on and reading some classic books. <laughs> and here are some square fours. There's quite a few of them here actually. And some more sidecars, some Harley sidecars. And I think this next Harley here was used as a police bike, not this very one, but as delivery, but more of the police in New York. I've seen some old film from the 70s and 60s. And some lovely delivery type sidecars as well. And probably my second favorite bike in the whole collection was this bike here which was a custom Ducati. And after all, we're all zoned out and sort of um, in a funny space from seeing all that lovely bikes. And it was our trip back home. 
back through the Lewis Pass. What was the best bit of the trip for the last best three days? Trip, I think it's those moments when you're all riding together and you're in the middle of this, which is great scenery, and the hum of the engines, and it's just, I love it. Uh, best bit of the trip was uh, the Tarkaga Hill and definitely the museum, which we've just seen. Absolutely incredible. 300 motorcycles. Um, and then my favourite, that was the Bruff Superiors, because uh, I've never seen it before. Uh, definitely recommend it, and it was a great trip. Neil, David, yes, Neil. what was the best bit of the trip for you? Uh, Jonathan? No, um, I think uh, the, the company again, and uh, the weather's been good. Yeah. It's been really enjoyable, yeah. And yeah. the pirate episode. The, the, the pirate um, restaurant, themed restaurant. Yeah. Did you, did you enjoy your traffic light? <laughs> and no speeding tickets. And no speeding yeah, tickets. no speeding tickets, tickets this time. What about for you, Neil? Um, Mum's probably coming up. Tack Hill with Grant and Lee. And you guys were already halfway up there and you were pushing the pace and it was all good. Yeah, wicked. AKA what was the uh, AKA Sloth Rider, what was um <laughs> <laughs> what was the best bit of the trip for you? Uh, everything really. Yeah. Yeah, definitely Takaka was the highlight. Yeah, all those twisties and yeah. stuff. Yeah. A bit scary for me. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, doing it and somebody to do it with, so yeah, yeah. I'm not worrying too much about it. Awesome. Yeah. Alright, nice. cool. The best bit of the trip for me, Takaka, can't pronounce it right still, um, was a good bit. It kind of reminded me when I was a kid when I first went in the deep end of the swimming pool. Petrified, um, but really, you know, proud to be there um, and mastering all those twists. It's probably one of the most challenging rides I've done for a long time, um, certainly on a motorbike, but certainly we'll go back there. The museum was great as well definitely worth a, a visit um, seeing all those rare bikes in the flesh rather than a little you know porno motorcycle magazine and stuff so definitely worth it and spending all the time with some great mates too cool. as you can see we had a great time and this is pretty much the end of the video so once again thanks for watching and remember subscribe comment and like uh, really appreciate the comments as comments as well anyway till next time cheers